Hi, this is David Mike Turtle. Welcome to video 7A, which is the first of four videos devoted to the operational topic, which is the part two topic. And we call it topic seven in the FRM. And so that means we start with the study guide and four readings which reappear from last year in the operational risk topic, including uh, Crowey on capital allocation and performance measurement. So this is largely about RayRoc risk adjusted return on capital uh, paper on the ranges and practices ranges of practices and issues in economic capital modeling which is really more of a um, qualitative or conceptual checklist and then two chapters from Dowd's text measuring market risk including a chapter on liquidity risks this is primarily about liquidity adjusted VAR or LVAR and then a uh, weak, sort of weakish chapter at this point on model risk. It's an old chapter. Um, I think uh, it's more like a conceptual or qualitative checklist as well. And then for learning spreadsheets, we've got uh, 781 is a illustrated Ray Rock calculation. And then 782 illustrates uh, Dowd's liquidity just to value risk, including for um, expected shortfall. So chapter 14, which is largely about Ray Rock, the point about Ray Rock, one of the points is that it gives us a common economic yardstick to measure risks and positions. So that's both horizontally business unit, customer, product level, but also vertically a way for us to aggregate transaction, customer, portfolio, and total firm level. So a graphic that I've uh, like to use here to illustrate some of these concepts This sort of summarizes some of the key terminology. So this would be a good time right now to uh, pay attention to this um, distribution here. Notice it's not the normal distribution because it has the positive skew. And so right away we sort of get a hint that this is probably not a market risk distribution. I mean, it could be, but it's more likely this is a credit or operational risk distribution. And then Notice Ray Rock is going to be risk adjusted return divided by economic capital. So we'll get more specific about that in a minute. But let's take our distribution here and identify first the economic capital. Well, in general, it's going to correspond to the unexpected loss. So we take this distribution here and we imagine that it's the credit losses that could occur. We're going to have to, starting from the left here and over to some point here, and this may be a mean, we're going to have the expected losses. And then in credit terms, or in terms of the credit portfolio, and in terms of the operational portfolio largely, we're going to say the expected losses are sort of a cost of doing business. And in the case of a credit portfolio, you'll recall that expected losses are going to be probably default times loss given default. So that's a credit concept, but the terminology here, because we're talking about Ray Rock, part of the virtue of Ray Rock is that it can be applied across the risk bucket. So we can take the same concept, extend it across the risk buckets, and then aggregate it. So the fact that this is this here is a credit risk concept doesn't interfere with the idea that we can have an expected loss concept here, or an expected drift. And then we're going to have an unexpected loss portion. And so in general, if you think about credit, we say the expected loss is covered by precisions or charged to, you know, uh, reflected in the yield and um, really handled in the uh, income statement. Unexpected loss are covered with capital. Capital is the buffer. So the economic capital generally corresponds here to the unexpected loss. You really should extend over here. So I just did that, match that up a little bit. And then we have here the purple line, which Crowley calls worst case loss, and is really our um, absolute VAR concept here, or um, if, we, if we want to include the drift. And notice because it's got the alpha to connote either the confidence or more likely the significance level. So the meaning here of this,